I'm Steve Garrett and I'm uh, one of the founding directors of the Riverside Market Garden. I was involved in running the Riverside Farmers Market and we felt there was a shortage in the supply of locally grown organic veg so we thought well let's try and produce some ourselves and uh, we knew from the outset we wanted it to be run as a co-op uh, a social enterprise rather than just a private business for all sorts of reasons and um, we identified some land and we sold some shares and we raised some funding from various places which was all the sort of seed money really to get off the ground and the first year we probably cultivated we, we rent a five acre field here we probably cultivated about one acre at the most uh, so um, it has the, 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 the business as such has grown organically as they say and um, you know, our, our main emphasis has been on, on quality, uh, also affordability, trying to make that balance, you know, between uh, charging a price that would make it possible for this to be financially viable in the long term, because that was a very important aim of ours, that this not be something that was dependent on grants. But, you know, with growing food, with vegetables, people in this country are so used to paying uh, very little for their food, uh, you know, you can't really charge the going rate. Um, it, you know, otherwise nobody will buy it. So what we've tended to do is try to grow high-value crops in our tunnels. We, we, we got a couple of polytunnels with the grant. And, um, you know, of course, the tomatoes and the salads and the, the, the peppers and the aubergines, you can get a better price for those. People absolutely love them. And um, I think over the, well, we're now into our sixth year of production. Uh, you know, we deliver 40, 45 bags of vegetables a week to people in Cardiff and the Vale, and we sell a lot of uh, produce at Riverside Market and Cowbridge Market. Um, we're getting, we're either, we're, we're pretty there at the break-even point, which is exactly what our um, ambition was. And now, from this stage, it's building on from now to see if we can make this, expand it and make it a more viable business without in any way diluting our, our social and ethical aims. At an early stage, Simon Michaels, our, uh, one of our other directors, was familiar with this process. He helped us, he drew up the documents. Uh, we put the word out to all of our friends and families and contacts. Because of having the um, connection with Riverside Market, which I was involved with from the beginning, uh, we knew a lot of people for whom the local, the fresh, the organic side of it was important. And I think that was a really important in terms of us being able to sell shares right at the beginning. We, we were known through the market, we had a bit of a track record. And, and more and more people are really supporting the idea of, of local, of local economy, but also, you know, environmentally friendly food, really, is what it is, uh, that also tastes delicious. So um, we were able to raise enough from the initial share issue to buy an old tractor, which was enough to get us going, uh, to buy a polytunnel, which was absolutely essential. That initial capital, which we couldn't really have raised anywhere else, you know, there was no chance of going to a bank. And I think crowdfunding for that kind of amount um, would have been ambitious. I think we started off with a few thousand to get going. and. Um, We've now in the region of 150 shareholders, you know, who are obviously our supporters. They're our members. In fact, they own they own the company in that sense. So um, uh, they've been also uh, a number of them come out to volunteer to work on the farm. We'd love to see more of that, and perhaps we could do more of that communicating to get the shareholders more involved. But we know from a bit of a survey we did with some students that a significant number of them are just quite happy to have invested a bit of money in it they don't really have the time or the inclination for any further involvement but they're quite happy uh, to, to, have, to have just provided that kind of support and, and so that's absolutely fine people can get engaged with us on any level that they want you know people were saying today uh, that Wales has got a, a, an honorable um, history really of, of a cooperative movement here very much in the mining towns the way that miners were able to create workmen's halls and libraries and you know, it, it is a really important part of our culture and our tradition, I think, in Wales. And I think it's marvellous that we're, we're moving back to that model. Because especially in the current economic climate, it, it works so well in terms of enabling the economy to work for people rather than just work for a few individuals. And after all, that's what economy means. Economy is how do people live, how do people make a living. So for me, it's a really positive move in the right direction. And uh, you know, we're delighted to uh, play whatever part we can in promoting it.